Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we're going to talk about Visual Studio 2026, all new insider preview build released after almost like four years. Because all these days, we know that Visual Studio have been with version 2022 and there was no new releases released, even though there is a new release every single time comes in like an upgrade, but this version number has never really changed. But now they have changed the number. They have got a lot of features as you can see over here. They have got the full integration or the full blown AI integration right now in their entire IDE. So basically the GitHub Copilot chat was there even in Visual Studio 22 before. But now with 26 version, they have got this AI feature integrated a lot more this time. That's what I could really see it uh, in a holistic picture in this particular IDE's experience. And they have got the themings change here and there. Uh, but overall, I think that this is more polished version. Maybe the theme is more aligned like Windows 11 operating systems version as well. That's what I feel overall. And in this video, I'm going to show you some of the features that I really like mostly and some of the things which makes our life even more handy and easy easier in 2026 insider preview build and it's going to keep on changing i'm sure these versions are going to be polished but for now i think the feature whatever they have got right now is quite better comparatively this is the splash screen of the visual studio so if you're going to open the visual studio 2026 insider you're going to see this particular splash screen and they have got this ide's uh, ui change at as well as you can see over here so if you have been using 2022 version 26 there is a change as you can see and i'm going to open the console app too and you can see that it is not very slow it's just very fast even though it's an insider preview build it is pretty good uh, and you can also notice that i'm actually running this entire visual studio 2026 version in the arm edition so this is not the full-blown uh, x80 6 or x64 build it is an basically an arm based version uh, and you can see that they have got this um, theming it's been changed over here i just changed this theme really but you can go and search for the themes and you can see that it's going to show you all the different themes like light theme uh, dark theme bubble theme whatever that you like if you just go and select this light theme you're going to be brought into this uh, light theme experience as you can see which is pretty cool and you can see that they have got this uh, github copilot chat pretty much like how it was there even in version 2022 but i'm going to show you some of the features that they have got improved overall uh, so the first feature i really wanted to show you is the the copilot's paste feature this is something which is very very uh, interesting and intuitive so let's say if i'm going to uh, run this particular app but even before i run this app let's say i'm going to put a breakpoint here and I'm going to run this particular application. It's going to hit this particular breakpoint. And let me just hover to the breakpoint over here. You can see that I get this person over here with this entire uh, JSON format. This is not kind of new or anything like that. This is always there. So let's say I'm going to copy this JSON and I wanted to create a model for this particular JSON. Like let's say a C-sharp model that I really wanted to create. What I do most of the time earlier is like I go here and then go for the JSON uh, to uh, C sharp uh, converter, something like this. Um, and then I go and paste this particular uh, code over here. Uh, or either I use the copilot feature to make this happen. Uh, so that was the thing that I used to do most of the time. I don't know, for some reason, the internet is super slow here. So I go and paste this uh, JSON uh, over here. And then once I hit convert, you will see that it's going to be converted into a C sharp uh, or POCO class file. That's how it used to happen all these time, right? But now with this new feature of 2026, what you're going to do is we can just go to any of the line over here and there is this option called as uh, edit and there is this new option called as uh, paste special. So over here you can paste the JSON as a class file. This is pretty neat and interesting, right? Even if you have an XML file, you can also create it as a class file and you're going to paste it. This is very, very handy. If you're going to be converting a JSON to a class file, I think this is pretty cool. So if I'm going to go and paste that, look at that. This is going to be generated for you on the fly. And this is the exact same code that we are seeing over here, as you can see, right? So this is what is going to happen over here. And this is quite neat. So this is pretty cool. So this is one thing which I really like about the paste special operation. And the other thing that you can do it over here, as you can see that we have got this diagnostic tool running and it will actually show you the performance uh, implication of your application executions and things. So if you're going to see all the performance measures, it's going to be showing up for you over here, uh, as you can see. But let's say you wanted to really test the performance of your application and you want to do a profiling, you can actually do the performance profiling test as well, pretty much like how you can even 
uh, do it like an expert level profiling test operation. So those things you can do it way more easier right now with a GitHub Copilot chat. So you can just go to the GitHub Copilot chat over here and then you can just uh, put the at and then you can see that you have got the context for profiler as well. So you can go ahead and select this profiler over here, something like this, and then you can say uh, analyze the performance of my app uh, and where it's getting slower. So once you ask this question, now what's going to happen is the GitHub Copilot chat is going to start uh, getting the response from the profiler and then it's going to start analyzing every single detail. So it's going to go and look at the JSON data service. So it's reading the person model for me over here and then it's going to go and get the performance analysis for you. So see that? Now it's reading the benchmark uh, for you and then it's going to run the benchmark uh, and then it's going to get you the details uh, over here. So that is one thing that you have got right now. Like even if you are not an really expert on the profiler side of testing, you can actually get the performance uh, implication of your application and where the performance toll is really taking place. You can get all those information from here. And actually I pasted this particular uh, JSON, like the POCO class file. Now that's the reason why this this is actually failing. So the moment I save this, this should just run. So I'm going to just stop this one. I really don't want to show you for now. Uh, but yeah, this is one option that you can see that the profiler is pretty cool. And you can also hit a slash here and you can see that uh, you can uh, get the explain, uh, doc, fix, help, optimize, test. Those are things which is there already. But apart from that, you can also do ask questions about the Visual Studio as well. See that at VS will give you the uh, option to even ask questions from the Visual Studio. So you're going to say uh, change the theme to dark. And if you hit enter, so even if you don't know where to go and change the theme, for example, then you can you can just ask this question and look at that. It's going to get you the information like how you can do it. Uh, and you can just go to this particular place. Look at that. It's directly going to take you there. And then if you just hit that dark theme, then it's going to go and change the dark theme for you. So this is another intuitive way of you doing it, which is pretty amazing. And there is one more thing which I really like about in this particular IDE is the, uh, is the way you can actually uh, do the uh, debugging and ask some questions for a complex operation. So for example, I'm gonna show you one of the uh, applications, just this code over here. Uh, and let's say I'm gonna go to this particular test. Uh, this is basically a rec and roll test for the BDD uh, test operation. So I'm gonna go and debug this particular test. The reason why I wanted to show you this particular feature is that uh, you can see that now I have got this particular data over here with the create instance of the user details type and we have got the data over here. So usually what we used to do it is if I want to really see what this particular type is, I'm gonna go right click uh, and uh, do a quick watch over here, something like this. Uh, it is going to show me what exactly is this particular uh, user details, which is fine. So this is how it used to show all the time, which is great. But what if I want to show uh, a dynamic type for that matter? So if I'm going to go to any one of the dynamic types over here, uh, which is this one, as you can see, and I'm going to go to the definition uh, and this is a dynamic type. So basically this is like not a strongly type, but this is a dynamic type, which is going to be instantiated during the particular execution. And I wanted to get the information out of the dynamic type during the runtime for that matter. So I'm going to do a step over, see that I get a, a user details. And if I'm going to hit this view, you see that now I get this I enumerable visualizer, but you also have an option to do a generate expressions over here. So this is from Copilot really. So if you're going to go hit this generate expression, you can now ask the questions from here. Uh, let's say if I want to get the uh, duration worked or maybe a grade or something like that, I wanted to get the grade. And if I'm going to hit enter over here, and what's going to happen right now is the copilot is going to go and write the code for me on the fly and it's going to get me the detail for me over here look at that so user detail dot select of this particular type so this way you can actually get the grade for all of the users something like this see this is pretty neat and i really like this fact as well because these are some things which were kind of missing earlier but now these features are very, very interesting. So this is one thing which I really like about as well. And the next feature I wanted to show you is the search feature. So uh, let's say if I'm going to go and search for a file uh, for that matter. So let's say 
uh, it's like new. Look at that. The moment I say new, even if I type in, it's going to show me the type, uh, like the member and everything over here. And it's going to show me the, the details and the search, like what exactly is the type, which is pretty neat. And let's say even if I'm going to miss some of the names like that, say mistype it over here, uh, new employee, or maybe I'm just going to uh, see what are the file that I really have. Uh, over here as you can see i have got some other login feature so i'm gonna say uh, some other login and look at that this is this is completely right uh, wrong because i'm saying sme or something like that and if i'm gonna hit uh, enter over here sorry it's in the feature search over here see that it can do a fuzzy logic match to say what exactly might be the particular search that i'm trying to do even though there is a typo it's gonna get me the exact file that I'm looking for. So the search is more powerful this time, uh, like unlike how it was before. And this is another feature which I really like about the, the search capabilities, which is pretty cool. And the last thing that I wanted to show you apart from the themings and the extensions and everything is the way you can ask the GitHub as well. So if you go to the, go to the GitHub chat over here, uh, Copilot chat, you can just say uh, at and see that it's something called as a GitHub. So you can go and ask the GitHub like, uh, can you uh, commit this code to main branch or can you commit this code or by creating a PR or you can also ask what are the uh, information what are the files being changed on this particular commit and all those things so can you check the files changed uh, in this uh, commit I'm sure there is not going to be any because at the moment there is no GitHub connectivity for this particular code. So it is not going to show you any of the information because it says that there is no GitHub URL or repository uh, over here. That's the reason why it couldn't be able to get it. So that is one other pain that you have got. That's the reason why it's not really showing you. But but yes, that is the way that you can actually do it. Uh, and then the last thing which I wanted to show you is the ability that you can ask the uh, copilot to generate the code for you. So I'm going to say best practice uh, code recommended by .NET Microsoft. If I'm going to go and search that, see, this is the .NET coding uh, standard and conversion. So I'm going to go copy this particular URL over here. Uh, and I'm going to say in the active document, uh, can you write the code by following the code standard? Something like this. Uh, and if I'm going to hit enter over here, now what's going to happen is now the copilot has access to the external URLs as well. And it is going to read that particular, uh, particular URL completely. And then it is going to go and modify things for you over here. This was the capability which was missing earlier. Now you can see that it's can able to fetch the external pages as well. The moment I hit the confirm, it's going to go and read the entire page for the best practices and the coding conventions. And then it is going to make the changes, So, which is pretty cool. So this was something missing earlier, but now the new Copilot has got this particular feature, which is quite neat. And I think this is very interesting as well. So this is another feature which I really like about in Visual Studio 2026. And apart from that, they have got a lot of other features, especially on the, uh, on the way you can work with the Git. Uh, git changes itself so you can just go and see uh, feature what's uh, new just go and search the page over here it's going to show you all the different uh, capabilities that they have got like uh, the file exclusion in the search uh, and they also have got the mermaid chart rendering which was a pain before now they have got it uh, and we already talked about the copilot url context better copilot responses uh, and the profile uh, copilot these things we just discussed about over here and they have also got the new profiler launch experience you can see that this is pretty interesting as well uh, and i think that this is going to be helpful for the person who really wanted to have multiple profiles for their standalone and also with the web connectivity they can also work on these as well uh, and they have got the hot reload improvements and blah 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 you can have a look at all these new features they have got i'm really not talking about the c plus plus and other things but at least whatever i used to work i feel like these are some of the improvement which is making visual studio 2026 way better that's it guys once again thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you like these features and i'm sure in upcoming days they are going to bring up even more new features in 2026 but at least for now this looks quite neat and interesting once again thank you so much for watching this video catch you in the next one